Hi everyone. In the last video, I showed you how to install PyStan 2 on your Windows computer. We did this because you can't natively install PyStan 3 on Windows, so at least in my opinion, PyStan 2 remains the best option for beginners who want to use PyStan on Windows. But PyStan 3 is a superior package. It is currently maintained, it has a better license, and works on the latest version of Python. So if you're a Windows user, the only way you can get access to PyStan 3 is to either change your computer or trick your computer to think it's Linux. Previously, I explained that you can do this using tools like Docker or WSL2, and today I'm gonna to show you how to get it running using WSL2. Keep in mind, this will only work for Windows 10 or 11 users. Those with Windows 7 or less, this won't work. Now, there are actually four steps to get all working. First, we need to set up WSL2 and an appropriate distribution of Linux. Then we'll need to install Python and GCC on that virtual machine through the command line. Lastly, we'll create a virtual environment, install PyStand 3, and validate that it works. What you'll see is the most challenging part of this is getting your WSL2 and installing Python through the command line. After that step, getting the C++ compiler and PyStand 3 installed is actually a breeze. But before we start, I want to give you a small mental model for how to think about WSL2 on your Windows machine, which might make things a little bit easier to follow if you've never had experience with this before. WSL2 is a lightweight virtual machine, a computer inside of your computer, if you will, with a Linux operating system. You can treat this virtual computer like a completely independent computer from your Windows computer, but you have to interact with it using a command line. There's no graphical interface. That means that we'll need to install things like Python and C++ compiler entirely through the command line. Additionally, you can get files on and off this computer through a volume mount that is automatically created in the folder where you spin up the virtual machine. This makes it easier to pass in Python files that you write on your host machine and pass out results back to the host machine. Okay, let's begin. Now, all of the instructions that I'm about to go through are on my GitHub, so you can go there for reference, or if you need a place to copy the commands from instead of typing them out, typing them out by hand. First, open up a PowerShell in administrator mode. You can do this by searching for PowerShell in the start menu, and then by right-clicking and running as administrator. You'll then get this screen, then we'll type WSL dash dash install, and this will enable all the features necessary to run WSL and install the Ubuntu distribution of Linux at the same time. This process might take roughly two to three minutes to complete. Once completed, reboot your system for the changes to take effect. After you've rebooted, Ubuntu should automatically start and will prompt you to select credentials. I'm going to use Stan as my username, but you can use anything you want. After that happens, the installation will finish and we can move on to the second step. Now to start the second step, I'm going to be using the PyCharm IDE, but you don't have to do this of course, you could just stick with using Windows PowerShell and any old text editor like Notepad and it would be just as good. Now in the command line, I've navigated to my project folder, which happens to be in C projects slash PyStan example, but for you it might be different. In this folder, I've got only two files. I have the instructions, which I've published to GitHub, so you can have a look at them there, and I'll use that to copy and paste the commands. And the other file I've got is a single Python file called main.py. This file doesn't have anything in it, and we won't need it. First, I'll boot up WSL2 virtual machine by typing WSL d Ubuntu. Now, when I do that, you can see that it's changed to green, and this tells me that I'm in the VM. Now, this is my command line portal to control the VM. Next, we need to download an Anaconda distribution of Python. Go to the repo, go to repo.continuum.io slash archive and pick the Linux version of Anaconda Python that you want. For me, I'm just gonna choose the latest one for the 64-bit computer, you can too. Um, but if you have a 32-bit computer, just choose the one that ends in uh, x86.sh. So copy that, then in the command line type wget and then the location of the version of Anaconda distribution that you want. So you know, repo.continuum.io.archive slash the version that you copy and pasted. I've just copied it from my instructions and you can do that too if you're following along. 
This will then download the Anaconda distribution of Python onto your VM. And this whole process might take roughly five minutes, depending on the speed of your internet. Now once this happens, you can now install Python onto your VM by typing bash Anaconda 3 and your version. And this will then prompt you to read the license agreement, which you should definitely read. So continue pressing enter until you finish reading it. And then if you accept the terms, type yes. After a while, it will, prompt, it will prompt you to initialize Anaconda 3. And once you've pressed yes, then that should be it. And Python will have been installed on your VM. To verify this, type exit and then open up the VM again. Now type which Python. This will then point you to where the Python interpreter is and it should be located in the Anaconda 3 folder. So if you've got this far, then you're doing really well. And we're about halfway through. The next step is to install the GCC compiler. And this is actually much simpler to do here than it is on Windows. So open up your VM again and type a couple of commands. First one will be sudo apt update, and then obviously put in your password. Then type sudo apt install build essential. And lastly, type sudo apt get install manpages dev. And once you get that all working, then that's it. You can verify that you've got the GCC installed by typing GCC dash dash version, and it should pop up with you know, version 9.8 or something. So now we're on to the last task, and that's to install Python. So first we're going to, in our Linux VM, we're going to create a virtual environment in Conda. Oops, uh, I got that. I got Conda and create the wrong, wrong way around. So, ma so make sure to specify a version of Python. I'll use 3.9. Then activate it. Now, if I type which Python, it will give me a Python interpreter inside of the virtual environment folder called standev, and this is what I want. Now, type which CC, GCC, and this will give, up, give us back the same GCC path, so we know that we can find GCC, and now we just have to install PyStan. So, all you have to do is type pip install PyStan. And that's done. So now we need to verify it. So I'm going to create a small test script. This is also on my GitHub. So if you just want to copy and paste it from there, um, if you don't want to follow along, that's cool. So I'll create a new Python file called test underscore pystand.py and we'll import the pystand package using import stand. We'll write a very simple model with one parameter, y, with a normal prior, and assign it to the string parameter test code. We'll then build the posterior using the build method. And then sample from it using the sample method. And finally, we'll extract the samples of y and print them to the console. Very simple. In order to run this file in the Linux VM, we just need to write python space test underscore python py. This works because the project folder we've got here is the mounting point for any files. So if you write a file in your host machine and save it to this folder, then it will be visible to the Linux VM. Um, this is really handy because it means that you can develop in your host machine and you don't have to develop 
in the VM in something like Vim or something. So, okay, it, it looks like that's finished with no problem. You can see the output of the samples of Y here in this array. And this all means that PyStan3 has installed successfully. Okay, so that was pretty tough, but we got there in the end and hopefully you made it here and you were able to get PyStan3 working on your Windows machine. If you ran into any issues along the way, in the GitHub instructions, I've got some troubleshooting tips for some of the most common errors, so have a read of that. Lastly, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I've got tutorials on Bayesian inference, Stan, and how Stan works under the hood. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.